Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> there we go. We are now live. Oh, Gents. oh no, I'm scared. Can't Me too. Be <laughs> 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 slow right now. But all good. Prag- so we're talking pragmatism, huh? To a degree. Pragmatism, not in the philosophical sense, but in the. Um, We'll expound on that as we continue exactly what we're referring to when we say pragmatism. Like the day-to-day application type stuff. Because pragmatism, in the philosophical sense, and and if you used to really just concise it, is do do that which works. And I think the classical, well, a good example was when Peterson was talking with that one uh, pastor guy at the Liberty University, and the pastor guy was asking about that question what was he asking about when he was trying to figure out if this works? He said something like, you're talking about that one video, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was questioning Peterson. He was saying, he was humbling himself, basically. He said, when we find these people, these damaged people, like the guy that came up on the stage, I think his name was David. Mm-hmm. He said, we typically come at these people with like a biblical sermon. That's how we counsel them. We do it with like a biblical sermon. It's something that's ongoing. And then he said something like, are we giving them false hope? Hmm. To which the response was, does it work? Does it work? And the answer was yes. Then proceed, he would say. They're not so concerned about, see, there could have been another question. Is it true? Is it true though? And that's true. But it wasn't that wasn't asked. It was more, does it work? We can regard whether it's true or not in a metaphysical sense, in an epistemological sense. Hmm. Oh man, that leaves a lot up to chance, doesn't so it? So we leave it to the point of <laughs> how efficient it is at the moment. Yeah. And that ties into where this guy said, which, which you were, which which you brought up about 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 a uh, career and work. Mm-hmm. And what did he say? Please read. I, I gotta find it. So right, why you find What's it? What's his name? Nassim Nicholas oh, Taleb. Oh, there it is, never mind. Yeah, too late. <laughs> he said, well, Don't be afraid. Don't be study scared. something old but not visibly useful, like the classics. Something modern and useful, like accounting or coding. Never something new and not visibly useful. Give me that one more time. Study something old. Study something old but not visibly useful, visibly like useful. Classics. classics. So it's like, sure. Philosophy okay, and literature. Mm-hmm. Even though it's ongoing and it's not really old but whatever that's uh, anyway something modern and useful like accounting or coding or something never something new and not visibly useful i kind of get what he's saying but mm, he's talking about like women's studies yeah that's right? what i was thinking about women's studies but, like kind of studies but mm. yeah mm. I think the wording is what I have a problem with. I, I think yeah. if, if you get past the uh, the wording, he actually uh, he has some points as far as being relevant in being mo- in modern. Sure, I can see that, but useful. That's the word that I have a problem with. Why is Cause, that? Because it does turn it to the pragmatic sense. You're saying you're saying the old ways or the traditional ways are not useful anymore. Be practical is what you're telling people to be, and that's. I don't know. If, if initial thoughts are it sets the bar really low for people. Well, start start at a practical level. Now there might be people who need that, so it's not bad advice 100% because there's people who can't even don't even know what the starting line is for themselves. So that might be a nice place to start. But if you're trying to entice people to do better and do more, to tell them to be practical is well, he's referring to school, to going to school okay. and studying. So it's when you go to school and studying. I'm assuming if you used to tell this guy, this guy was to ask you, what are you going to study? What are you going to school for? You say, I'm going to school for uh, literature. I'm going to school for philosophy or even psychology. He would probably tell you, that's not very useful. It's not very practical. It's not very demanding. Why don't you go do something with the business or something with the mathematics or engineering? Why don't you do that? That's, that's still telling them to be practical, isn't it? Yeah. That's a, that. Okay, so the context is laid out in that very, in that very, uh, in that kind of trajectory. 
It also tells what his thoughts on the other subjects are. He doesn't hold them in high regard or esteem. No, he doesn't. People which, like that don't, and that's what they're saying. Yeah. They're saying you can do that as a hobby. You can go and study literature and art as a hobby. That's fine, but it's, don't think of it as something. Don't take it too serious. Is, is what he's saying. He, life is basically. He's pretty much defining. My my opinion. People who say this are pretty much defining for me what life is about. <laughs> in, in, in that very statement, they're trying to tell me this is what life's about, dude. Life is only about you going out there, getting a job, providing for a family, or looking for a family, and surviving and dying comfortably. <laughs> That's what life's about, according to these guys. Yeah. In order to exist, you must do A, B, and C. Yes. And if we do, if we do reach something of spirituality, again, don't, get, don't take it too serious. Don't let it impede on your practical life. Don't let it impede on how you make money. Because it's not going to... Philosophy is not going to bring food to the table directly. Neither is theology. Neither is God. Because God, again, it's, 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 it's something for your psychological needs. It's what they would argue, I suppose. It's interesting, though, because who the hell... Like, what if you're not thriving? What if you're depressed out of your mind and you have trouble waking up in the morning? Hey, just get a job. It's like, well, that's not really the solution. Wouldn't you thrive more yeah. if that theology or that psychology or philosophy like, wakes your ass up and actually makes you go out and do something? Well, let's mm. let's assume okay. for a moment the way, and I'm, I'm going to piggyback off you there. Let's assume for a moment what he's doing is for the sake of people in need of some direction, right? You tell them that, and um, take myself. I'll put myself on that one for example. When I went to school, I must have changed my freaking major at six, seven times easily because you don't know what you want to do. You yeah. just know. Oh, I have to go to school. Why? That's a different subject. But for people like that, when you tell someone to be practical like that, you're setting the bar. That's what I meant by setting the bar low. You're setting the bar low. Okay, this is, you know, do something practical. Get into the maths and the sciences and things like that. You're not really taking into account that this might have long-term effects. So if this person finally does discover it, yeah, maybe you helped them in the short term. You helped them with step one, getting some sense of direction. But if I were to choose math or science, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those, but those are not my applied mental way of thinking. I just don't, that's not a, a something that I want to do, plainly put. So to tell me, be practical, do this, this, and this, so you can be part of society, and so on and so forth, that might help me get past some pretty serious blocks, but when I finally discover myself and what the true self is, that put a bigger wall than anything else in front of me. Yeah. That put a wall that I might not be able to climb. So that's, a, that, I, that's why I think that's kind of semi-dangerous advice. Very, very, too much of a blanket statement to say something like that. Way too practical. Yes, I think blank, blanket statement is actually a very appropriate way to, to praise this situation. Goddamn engineers, man. Goddamn <laughs> engineers. I'm telling you. <laughs> engineers. And physicists. <laughs> engineers, physicists. But okay, let's do the inverse. Now, why is it important to pursue something like literature, philosophy, or even something like psychology? The easiest answer is because it's what your heart desires and what you call to, what you're yeah. called to. Usually, something like that is not something that people encourage. I <laughs> <laughs> okay? So if you keep getting pushed in that direction, for me it's music. I keep getting pushed in that direction, even though I haven't really found a lucrative way to make a living off of it. Something's telling me there's a way. I just haven't found it. Maybe I haven't looked hard enough, worked hard enough towards it, whatever it may be. Maybe the people that I'm looking to help me in that are not actually helpful. <laughs> Those are things that I have to take into consideration. But I'll tell you right now, I guess I'll sum it up like this. If I were to get into one of my musically creative moments, that man with a statement like that, not him directly, but a statement like that from anybody would kill the creativity right off the bat and tell me it's not worth doing. And that's, that's dangerous, especially if, if creativity is your purpose, so to speak, or if that's the route that you need to go. Mm -hmm. So that, that's I don't like the blanket statement because it really tells people Start somewhere, don't care where. And that's that's not smart. Yeah. You, you really should figure out what's good for you. That's the start. Figure out what's good for you. Now, if being practical and pragmatic like that is good for you, then go for it. He's not wrong. He's not wrong there. Uh, but to, to, to say, well, if you're lost, just start with this, that, that could be really, really... Which is unfortunate. Is they're not even saying start with that. It's let that be your end. If anything, let that be... Your determining factor, let that be what you decide to do ultimately and most importantly and majorly is a decision like this where it's practical and it's accepted in the market. That's that's altruism at its finest. Well, you know, when I was in when I was going to college, like I was saying, some of the depressing things I've heard there was 
usually from the professors when they would try when they were encouraging us and they were trying to motivate us which I thought was really more of a discouragement of saying you're preparing yourself on how to be you're preparing yourself in school how you're gonna address your employer how you're gonna be how you're gonna present yourself for a job almost almost pre preparing you for work it's what it was all university was course to prepare you for work okay that's it ultimately what it seemed like and this was in like a history class as well that I heard this from and in, 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 in my, something I mean something inside me unsettled because I, mean, I don't think that's what the whole purpose is that's part of it that's a branch of, of, of university but it's not the whole purpose of it last time I remember it was a it was supposed to be the conglomeration of universal of uh, the university of universal ideas or the diversity of ideas uniting basically university uniting of diversity of ideas coming together for the intellect for the soul and for the practical purposes of, of existence that's so why we have literature, that's so why we have philosophy, that's so why we have sciences, that's so why we have mathematics, which is in science. So you can have, you be a fully whole person, not just a, just a rudimentary, practical, stern, and stagnant individual and neglect the soul because I guess what? Apparently, certain, certain, according to certain scientists, there is no soul. There is no purpose to it, so therefore everything else must die from it. Everything else becomes a hobby now. Well, that's... That. I, obviously, I don't agree with that. No. So, the, what is the benefit then? So, what is the benefit of? of, of well, I, I, C.S. Lewis said, and this is something I've, I've always encouraged. He said, "You don't have a soul." He said, "You have a body. You are a soul." And I always continue that with the follow-up question: Is ooh, which is what a wordplay? Well, which is this? It's you know how to take care of your body. It's very practical, it's very simple, you know, you eat right, you exercise, you know, you sleep, and meditate, all those things. You take care of your body that way. But how do you take care of your soul? How do you nurture your soul? With that same attention you give your body, how would you do that for your soul? If, if you are a soul and not a body, then that should be a very important question one needs to ask themselves and consider about what existence is really about. What that man said is actually, that it's actually suffocating the soul. We'll suffocate the soul. Mm -hmm. Unless you're an engineer type of person, then you're just you're glad to hear that. Yeah, which, it motivates you to keep going that route. Which you just become basically you now you now basically have how do I put it where they have now I don't even know how to phrase it, but what, if you're an engineer person who hears a statement like that and you're glad about it, it's like okay, good. I guess I'm safe, I'm good. Lucky for me I was born with this kind of temperament. Lucky for me I was born with these kind of desires and the market fits just right. Right on. I feel bad for all the other guys who have the right brain kind of mid temperament who are more philosophical inclined, who are more about the who are more neurotic in their in their temperament. I feel bad for those guys and who are less conscientious. Because I don't know what they're gonna do. They're gonna have to they're gonna have to forsake those things which comes natural to them and to the nervous system and forsake all those things and come to my world and accept my temperament and what they do. Ah, so what you're saying is it makes a concrete of right and wrong. But really, it's not. It, it, no, that's not a con because it's not a concrete statement. It's giving people the idea or the impression that what they're doing is concretely right. Well, it's yeah. just to work. It's like concretely trying to be right and wrong in what someone else wants to do with their life, which you have no business in tampering yeah. with that. That's absolutely insane. Yeah, there's a difference between oh. helping someone and telling them what to do. Yeah. Well, he is trying to help you by telling you what to do, he says. Trying to give you some guidelines, at least. Trying to give you some like, guidelines. Just go be an accountant, man. It'll be great, I swear. Yeah. Okay. I can't think of something more boring. Go right You're going to be depressed every day. You're going to feel stagnant. You're going to feel like you're missing something. It's all right. You're going to be making good money. You're going to be having a roof over your head. You're going to have always food on the table. I guess that's all that matters, man. Remember, you're an animal. All that matters is survival. But what do you mean causes someone to say something like that, then? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. It's funny because all of us, none of us are like that, so it's, no. what it's, have but it, it's that from a worldview, though, right? It is a worldview, yes. Now, the worldview. Uh, 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 pragmatism, right? The pragmatism Especially. worldview. Pragmatism worldview, which is the philosophical. Mm -hmm. oh, see, that's the thing about it is. Throwing pragmatism like that it has to be defined in the, in the way that uh, William James, I think it was, from the metaphysical club that started in Harvard which then evolved to the philosophy with three other guys 
the role of pragmatism and again in the, in, the, in the essentially it's about doing what works it's about doing that which which seems to suffice the situation and the and circumstances at hand uh, truth in the sense of again is not really the, the main it's not really the main concern but that's the conscious state of pragmatism the unconscious state of pragmatism is more of what most Americans and Western people act on like a statement like that, he doesn't. I don't think his worldview says, "Oh yeah, that derives from pragmatism." That, that's why I say this. It's more of this is something that I've learned that works. This is something that I learned that seems to be efficient, and this seems to be the only thing that matters because that's all I've been either been exposed to, or that's all that I seem to be concerned about that that I care about. So I think others should be thinking this way too because it will it will it will progress longevity, and it'll be good for the health, physically speaking. And, what, and what's wrong with that? Okay. See, to me, now I'll throw my Taoist aspect in this. That's a misinterpretation of what we call Wu Wei, which is action without intent, right? Not forcing something. A lot of people would take right. that and say, oh, then don't do any action at all. That's what you mean by it. No, that's not what I mean. Action is required at some point in time to take action, right? But without forcing it is the, is the lesson. To not force action is exactly what he's misinterpreting there. Instead of saying, oh, well, that's not working for you. Don't force that to work for you. Force this instead. When really you should be saying, it's the forcing that's not working for you. It's the fact that you're forcing yourself into a corner or a certain venue or something like that. Not the area in which you're forcing yourself. That's, that's a misinterpretation. Maybe, I don't know, I, I would, the journalist in me would say, let me get more context on what he's talking about because he would, hopefully he would clarify something like that because you're telling people, like you said, you're telling people to be pragmatic, to be practical, to have a single world view and to completely disregard what your body and your soul is telling you. The fact that you're questioning it tells you that you're not sure. So if you're not sure and you're just taking someone else's word for it, do you automatically become sure? No. Not in my experience, at least. Not at all. You have to test it out. So he's essentially asking people to conduct his experiment on themselves. I don't like that. Go into debt doing so, waste four, eight years of your life. That's not to say that he's wrong. That's yeah. why I would stop myself. Yeah. Right. I'm not going to say, oh, you're wrong. You're wrong for doing that. But you might. your results might be fruitful for people. They might be very, very good for some people. But to say that that's the way, mm, no. Well, he is right as in regards to what you brought up is... Yeah, the fact that his first recommendation was be an accountant. God, man, give me a break. <laughs> Who was yeah, I can't get over that. <laughs> Who was the room full of people that he was talking to or the oh, context of people? I, probably engineers, the engineer types. And I mean, the engineer type fits perfectly into accounting. It's so just... God, maybe he was man. just appealing to the STEM-fielded mind. Yeah, when, well, he also... he I know he views psychology to be a largely bullshit field. Yeah, you know, I can't I don't know how he refers to it. He refers to it as, you know, he, he refers to empirical like the idea of having empirical evidence as being nothing. Yeah. He disregards it completely. I have no <laughs> idea. I know. Where the hell do you think hard evidence comes from? I don't know. <laughs> Mathematics? I really don't know. And where did that come from? This, okay. No, sorry. That's yeah, yeah. That's ridiculous. Say, well, okay. That's ridiculous. But I do want to, I want to, this is not a full change. This is maybe like a 90 degree turn. You had said something about psychology and, and that uh, we won't name names, but someone saying, why would you want to get into a, a stupid field like that? And I'm, I'm curious if you could elaborate on the perspective of that, because that seems to be what this person is saying. It seems to be identical. Very similar, because this, 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 this professor of mine was a uh, ah. PhD in mathematics. <laughs> There's a pattern there, ain't there? Why do they force things to be pinned against it's a each pattern. other? Yeah, yeah, this is this is <laughs> pinning it against each other. live in harmony. There's an opposition. Why are they? So college is like right in the middle. Oh, God, it's right in the middle, but it's getting pulled, you know, from one end to the other. Because you know, through behavior and observation of behavior and so forth, we have been able to observe. Psychologists have been able to observe certain things empirically. Now, <laughs> especially through neuroscience as well, with the fMRI. So when he asked the question, asked this question about what do you want to, what are you going to, what do you intend to get out of school? What do you intend, what's your end goal from college? Some have very, you know, 
satisfactory answer to what he would consider satisfactory of mathematics or, or business or engineering or something like that. I said psychology, and he said, why would you want to do that? He said, because he, and, and, and his argument was a reference to one of his friends who has a bachelor's of psychology, got his master's for, I don't know what exactly area of psychology, and now he's working on his PhD, and he says, yeah, he, but he works at a, uh, at a, uh, at a uh, sports, sporting goods store with a bachelor's of psychology and a master's of psychology. Right. And, and I understand, because I, I do tell people, and I knew this beforehand, that when you get a bachelor's of psychology, all you learn is the concepts of psychology. You're not really, you're not exactly, you're not a psychologist, you just know the concepts. And, I, and that's, but if you intend with the, with the more uh, intentional goal, with the more intentional mind about why you go into psychology, I'm going to go to psychology to do research. I'm going to go to psychology to do, to eventually maybe get into counseling. Go into psychology, go into maybe statistics. It's more of a delineation as you go to further school. Then it's worth it. The market is there. I mean, most of the things, the statistics that we use, whenever it's a crisis that happens in, in, the, in the country, who do you see people being asking questions to? <laughs> That's the, it's always clinical psychologists. What happened to this guy? What was the behavior? What do we say? What do we do now? Why is it these guys? These guys are the experts on this con on these kind of pathologies, at least to the to the best of, to the best that they can be experts in. I'm not saying it's a perfect field because how do you how do you quantify human behavior, human thoughts, and human and just human nature? How do you you can? But we can assess and at least observe and come close to the truth of what's going on in human behavior and human intent as possible by observing it much more keenly. And these guys do this through a lot of observation, through a lot of research. That they do. So when you do, when you, I think when you do research, then you get some over psychology. But it it is an arduous journey because it's not like engineering or mathematics where you could just do a bachelor's and be done, or nursing, or accounting, get a bachelor's and you're done, yeah. you're set. It's it's it takes a little longer. And if you want to take the time and invest the time to go that couple few more years for that for a, for a goal for an end that's going to be more satisfactory for your soul, I, I don't see why you should have said that. But again, he came from bias, and he's very practical in, in his intention. And I'm sure, because I, I work at a restaurant where majority of people who work there have psychology degrees because they're bachelors. It's, it's, yeah, you should know that by now. I'm not surprised. Well, there's a big assumption, that, an underlying assumption with what you just said there. Um, and that's, with statements like that, of course. And that's that your goal is just to have the bachelor's degree because that's all you think you're going to need. That's a very big assumption out of people. Now, it's also something that I, I would personally say I think uh, is kind of how the, the U.S., at least, the Western culture works. Well, as long as you got your bachelor's, that's good. You're, you're qualified for something. Mm -hmm. But I don't go to school to be qualified for something. I go to school to learn a specific trade or a specific way. Uh, and if I'm truly interested in it, I wouldn't stop at a bachelor's degree. It's almost as if statements like that are encouraging people, okay, cool, you got your bachelor's, you're good. You're, you're good enough for society now. That's a pretty shitty benchmark to set for people, isn't it? Shouldn't it be, hey, you like this? Cool, you got your bachelor's, and cool. What else are you going to do? Shouldn't you keep, wouldn't you want to encourage people to keep learning keep down that path and progress and fine-tune fine and finite skills and all of that stuff? Mm -hmm. it's, that's appealing to a broad spectrum of people who are just trying to get by. That's it. Just trying. Get by in life. They don't mind doing the same thing for for the rest of their lives. Go get mm -hmm. get a vacation every now and then. That's their change. Take a vacation. <laughs> and then come back and do it again. No, well, you know, I was thinking about <laughs> well, I was thinking about this the other day. It was a trip. I was like, because I was thinking about people working with corporations. I'm like, oh my God, what an enslavement. Because they give you vacations for about a week or two, but you gotta come back and work all these group grueling hours of 10 hours a day and so mm -hmm. forth and you just stuck there until the next vacation so you look forward to the next vacation and I'm like but you're making good money you're making like 50 G's or so in a state like Arizona that's really good it's pretty good out here but, but it's like but your soul man your soul has to be affected by this we cannot undermine either the soul exists or the conscious part of the person exists or it doesn't it's one of those things man and you better if you're an engineer you better hope it doesn't exist because then therefore you're not neglecting anything very important and if it does exist, then you better check yourself and find out what's going on. Oh, man. Straight up, dude. Because it's, cause, I mean. Take just that. Because think about it. That's what, that's what causes, that's, that I'm, 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 that, I, that's, that's reading for depression. I don't, I don't disagree, but I do have to play devil's advocate Go here. Because we, we are omitting a very, very large group of the STEM field who are passionate about their field. 
which I would hope what do you mean, all, what do you mean by STEM field? Uh, like the, the actual sci- yeah, the study, you know, sciences and technology, okay. uh, engineering, mathematics. Uh, the statement you made is not incorrect in regards to that blanket statement. However, the people who are pursuing, as I was saying, pursuing their particular mathematic or engineering field mm-hmm. because they want to finite skill, because they love it and are passionate and, and so on and so forth, that's, that should be a point of encouragement for them. And even that a statement like what he said is not a point of encouragement for them. Well, there's no, it's still a distinction there because it's not really an argument because it's still the distinction of people who work with corporate and who want to be, let's just say, just remain as an accountant, yeah. accountant and that's it and not progress. And STEM field places like research and science inquiry, you can always grow in that area. You can always grow. And, it's, and if people who want to discover certain things about how to, how, to, how, to, how to cure certain illnesses or how to find a better way to, to allow people to, to live more comfortably or whatever, right? Whatever that is that that's bringing people's attention, making people motivated to, to, to acquire more knowledge, then therefore it's there. It's going to be a progression. But those who just they stuck doing numbers and just punching numbers all the time, whatever that means in accounting, or work at a corporate nation where you know what to expect every day, all you got to do is maintain and sustain it, but you're making good money off it. I think that's, I don't know, man. I think that's, I'm going somewhere off now. No, I get, I, I get I but what I was getting at is, those particular corporations that do that, I don't think STEM field people are actually looking for that either. Maybe they settle into a job like that, because let's just put my own little spin on it. When you tell me, hey, this job has perk of two weeks of vacation, you're basically telling me the perk <laughs> is freedom for two weeks out of the year. That's basically what you're telling me. So I say fuck you to that, first and foremost. Um, but took a lot of failing to realize that. Yeah. However, the people who are really interested in any field, we happen to be talking about the engineering and sciences field and things like that, but people who are really interested aren't going to be motivated by that. They're not gonna. They're not gonna run for the corporation just because they're large. They're gonna go to the corporation because of some other reason. Because oh hey, they're practicing the field that I'm really interested in, and I really really want to dive more into it. And okay. I think I can help them get better at it. Okay. They shouldn't be enticed by the perks of vacation, by the perks of 401k. That they're nice to have. Mm-hmm. Sure, but that shouldn't be your initial motivation. Right. That's not why you get into that. And if it is, you're you're basically fighting to survive. And that's that sucks, man. That really sucks. Uh, uh, engineering field, art field, it, whatever. It doesn't matter. Don't get into it for that reason. That's not why you do it. So I do agree with you in a way, but at the same token, it is saying that the people who are one-track minded like that, that's what they're looking for. And yeah. it's not. They're looking for something greater too. If you're an engineer and you absolutely, I have a, a buddy, he's a diesel mechanic. I don't have the first fucking clue what he does. <laughs> okay, diesel I know what mechanics. diesel is, I know what mechanics are, and I know what engineering work he does. But he loves it. When he talks about engines and things like that, he absolutely loves it and how it works. And I get lost and I couldn't recite back half the words he said to me because it doesn't make any sense. But he has the same passion about that that I have about art. And he actually, I would say he's more advanced than me because he took the time to get the degree and go to a job that allows him to practice that. Mm. Now, where am I going with this? Well, he's reached a roadblock. He's no longer happy with that company. Okay. What do you do from there? That's his, that's, I, I'm tying this back into the whole, okay, you got your bachelor's, now what? Right? He's at the same point. He's got his degree. He worked for that company. Now is he staying there just because of the perks? Is that okay. it? It's a reason to stay, not a reason to progress. Not, not a reason not if he has a family. If he has a family, then he's got a responsibility. Well, then now they got you by the balls. <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh, well, you got a family? See, cool. See, we'll that, give maternity that's, leave. That's the one. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's see, that's throwing. That's, <laughs> oh no, that's it. That's that's, that's throwing. just I'm, I'm throwing some low blows, but for a reason. Hopefully, yeah. people would. I'm saying this because people should oh. not be thinking like that. That no. shouldn't be your motivator. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, the the polar opposite of that is also bad. The the starving artist. As oh, bad. That's yeah, so that's bad too. You got it equally bad. That's what you have to practice that. But yeah, you need both in your life, and you're probably gonna lean more of one way than the other. Mm-hmm. So you really have to watch yourself. If you're the engineer, maybe you need a little bit of flavor in your life. If you're the artsy guy, maybe you need to just go get a damn job. Need some structure. <laughs> yeah, you need some structure. <laughs> so what's from, up? Yes. Starving artist. So what's up? Is the balance? I was never a starving yeah, artist. Really what you, know, down you know my answer is balance. We could go, every balance. video we ever make, I could end with balance. <laughs> <laughs>
Balance in all things. <laughs> no, it, it, it is a balance, but it's here's where I will negate maybe something that has I have said before, where balance is always you know staying balanced. You're gonna make some wobbles. You're gonna make some some teetering in your life. It's the ability to not get comfortable in that teetering. If your leg is standing on one platform that's weaker than the other, and you enjoy that feeling, well, know that you're still off balance. And as long as you can get yourself back on balance, then by all means, push the boundaries. But if you're doing it just for the pure sake of desire and you enjoy the feeling and then you forget, oh shit, this could hurt me, well, that's on you. That's a decision you chose to make to be on balance. Is that, yeah, that's a, you said the word desire. And I think that's a, that's a pretty good. Yeah. Do you think that's like a, do you think that's the equivalent of selling your soul to the devil? I'm biased. You're biased. I am biased in saying yes to that because I, I'm of the newly found faith. Obviously, Tao isn't telling me that to remove yourself from desires, all worldly ah. desires. So I have a bias towards that. I wouldn't put that on worldly other people. Desires, huh? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, and at the same token, one, you know, the whole reason I'm doing a discipline regimen is because I'm getting rid of the desires that I think are desires. Ah, right. Yeah. But really, to get rid of those things is going to speak to me on the things that I first and foremost, need, and then the things that I can afford to want. Afford to want. Okay. You know, it, just because I want something doesn't give me the divine right to go get it. Right. What were you implying, Jamie, really? when you said desire? Um, Who, me? Yeah, you said desire, so you just... Well, I think you kind of hit it right there, removing desire. Mm -hmm. You're on a strict regiment to remove false yeah. desire from false your life. False desire. False desire. So that's, I guess when I said selling your soul to the devil, it's like, I don't know, what's an example? It's like the stereotypical douchebag guy that goes around sleeping with women and chasing girls. It's like, mm -hmm. that's selling your soul to the devil. That's yeah. a temptation, a desire that's going to leave you... It's a cheap desire. <laughs> it is a cheap desire, but it's also a false desire too because... I don't know about right? cheap desire. Ultimately... Start impregnating oh. women. <laughs> well, okay. I thought you meant on a soul. I'm like, well, yeah, you're yeah. sacrificing your soul. That's your... Yeah. No, I went, I went, children I went, children I went. are expensive, and that's why I spend my money on vacations. Yeah. <laughs> Just throwing a bow at today. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, no, no, that is... Yeah, <laughs> yes, I will agree with, with you on all of that. But selling your soul to the devil is your lack of understanding what you need as opposed to what you want. Right? It's also very religious. Yeah, so which triggers ah, me. I'm just kidding. I'm getting ganged up by two Christians. That's help right. me. That's right. Yeah. Who's gonna help you? Where's that bottle, Ivan? Right. Get that bottle out. Just kidding. <laughs> I would have, but I wouldn't sure you can. Okay, so what are we saying? <laughs> we're saying that pra we're saying to sum it up that, it. that pragmatism has a, the statement that he made led us to talk about prag the pragmatic and practical thoughts, right? Approach on how approach. one ought to live their lives or make a decision for their lives and what it means to live a, I don't even think I want to call it meaningful life because I think meaningful is not even part of the equation, a productive and efficient life. Okay. It doesn't matter if it's meaningful or not because oh. a meaning would imply <clears throat> something not so practical. When you say, okay, that sounds kind of weird. What do you mean? Can it not just be a practical existence and wouldn't that be meaningful enough? Like having children and having a wife and having a job and wouldn't that be meaningful enough in its own? Yeah, I will say so. So what did I, why did I say it's not a practical example? Because the way it's being projected is is, is in opposition to something that's much more uh, metaphysical, something much more from in the, um, how do I say, in a much more transcendent state, for instance. If I was to call something meaningful in regards to, yes, I have, I would have, a, all the, all the, all the, everything just crossed, where I have everything that, that the society has, motivated me to have, which is healthy, you know, it's healthy to have a family unit, it's healthy to have a house, right, and have a job, and you have yourself sustaining all of this, it's healthy to have those things, but it doesn't have, that's not the end of it all. It provides stability. Because as a human being, we now have to ask ourselves, that brings a sense of meaning, but doesn't have the actual, it's, not, it's an ingredient of meaning, but doesn't mean it's the end and all of meaning. Mm. So it's, 
having being able to have a family. Say, okay, what about my family? What about this family I have? What are, what are we? Here's be an example. What if we as a family we go and help out since we have? Let's find out our gifts, something that we're very good at as a family. I just think it's a scenario, and let's see if we can go and help out our community somehow, spiritually. Maybe we can counsel the community in such a way since you're so good at listening or something like that. And, and maybe maybe what is it? Uh, um, hospitable, since you know since we have such enough room and so forth. things like that. That's that's at a, at a meaning more than a transcendent level, mm-hmm. where meaning extend, expands further than just that practical level. That's practical before that, it's practical. After that, it's not so practical. Because now you're doing something for something outside yourself. And outside mm-hmm. your unit. When you do something outside yourself, outside your unit, it's no longer a practical sense of meaning. So, you can hit level 10 doing those things, but how do you get to level 20? Does that make sense? Like, I can get to level 10 in whatever meaning, right? Yeah. Level 10 meaning by having... Family, okay. kids, blah 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 blah, job, yada yada. But then, how do I go beyond that? Because okay. once I've gotten that, I mean, you could, up. yeah, you could easily get all that by age thirty if you're ambitious, I guess. I guess that's yeah. the right word to use. Easily get it by thirty. Yeah. And if you're on the right track and you're you're well oriented and all that good stuff. Yeah, I- and I know that this is what we're going to be talking about on Tuesday, so I'm not going to jump the gun on this. But that that plateau is a great deal of why people get depressed because they yeah. they construe that as their meaning. <sighs> they construe reaching that level as okay, I fulfilled my purpose. I'm my ultimate. Meaning. Because somebody told them that. Someone somebody lied told them that. Yeah. Somebody lied, somebody lied, lied to them, them and they swallowed it, and now they're something like the that price. guy. It might be some degree, you know. Damn, like some degree. <laughs> Right. Oh, I like engineers are cool, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't have much of a problem with them, typically. Until they start saying stuff like that. Yeah, you start saying like, things like that, and we're going to just throw the gloves on, bro, and, just, and, just, and go toe-to-toe, because you can't let you get away with that. You can't let anybody get away with that. No, that's, that's that. You, 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 now you, cause you, you, you're, causing a, you're causing a friction here. You're making a... Not only not only your presuppositions being... Becoming in a form where it's trying to dominate, Somebody else's, but it's also trying to tell me what reality is about. Again, you're trying to explain to me what reality is about in a probably subtle way, but I still sense it and I still see it. At least most of us see it. Yeah. And when you see that, then it's like, well, I'm not to challenge that. Because you that's a big statement you're making about something so complex. That's Why are they challenging it? Sorry, go ahead. We see that, but not everyone sees that. Because most people, no, I shouldn't say most people, a lot of people will see that and they'll say, well, what's wrong with that? He's just doing X, Y, Z, and I don't, I, I don't know if they're just naive and they literally cannot see it, or if they're just intentionally being blind to it, like you know what Peterson says, being willfully blind to it. I don't know which one it is. Yeah. Or they're content. A problem, yeah. Or they're content and they like what he's saying and they agree with it and it suits them. So howdy doody, it suits everyone else too. I, I have no problem with people being content with it, right? Yeah. Uh, however, I do have a problem with when you need something more and you start blaming other people because you stay complacent. Like That happens a lot. When, when you're a content person with the basics, the fundamentals, and then all of a sudden something inside you needs a little more, whatever field it may be, you know, spiritual oh, health, yeah. whatever the hell okay. it may be, you need something more. All of a sudden you start blaming the outside world because right. things didn't go the way your contentment went. That's on you. Yeah. You have to hold yourself accountable for that and responsible for that. Mm-hmm. And you, you can't just go around and say, oh, well, it's because you're impeding on my content. No, I have a right to not be content, to keep pushing, to keep going. I have just as much a right as you, and I'm not pushing that on you. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I'm leaving your lazy ass behind the way I see it. <laughs> I can also, one can also be, I can also tell myself, I can also be in the same position, right. but, but in the other way. For instance, I can tell someone to focus on your soul, nurture your soul, and forget the pragmatic part about life. And that can also be a, 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 a that can also be a bad thing. That can also be a very unhealthy thing. Because then you become the uh, what you all said earlier, the um, the starving artist, artist, the starving artist. Starving artist. They can yeah. motivate something like that, and and that's not that's not pleasant either. That's not wise as, at all. It's no. having a balance, but I'm being cliche about it though. Don't be cliche about the balance. It's, it's because <laughs> you, you end up right back where you started. Yeah. I like how you add that tidbit of not being cliche about it. Because, well, good I have, God, amen. I have to a that. house and a family, and a, I have 
good money. And I, and I go and to church. I'm doing everything that I love, and I go to church. I'm balanced. The church is what balances you up. <laughs> yes. The church. When you showing up on Sunday. And that's that's the majority of people now. What would be the what would be the un the un cliche aspect of this? Well, let's just say you're a spiritual person. Let's just say a Christian now. Christians, here we are. Um, if God exists, either God exists or He doesn't. You gotta ask yourself that question. You gotta wrestle with that. Either God exists or He doesn't. And if He exists, then find out which what exactly about this God that we know, and what is it about this God that we can know, and who is this God, and what is He asking of me? What is He asking of my time and of my existence? Those are hard questions to ask, but those are questions that need to be asked if you believe this exists. And if he doesn't exist, then dang, then you need to, you need to, I don't know what to say about that. That would be difficult if you find out God doesn't exist. Ah, man, so it's like, well, this is a whole other conversation. Yeah, that is a whole other conversation. So be able to go into that conversation, I will say, <laughs> when you wrestle with that and you come, you become compelled and persuaded in either or, then you live authentically with that conclusion. If God exists, let's just say that, and you live in a practical life, and you're looking for something transcendent of meaning, then you wrestle with God and find it to the point to where you actually stretch yourself past your limits to fulfilling what God's called you to do. If it's the Bible, read the book of Acts and see what they're doing, and see how you can implement that kind of lifestyle in your life here. Or look at what the prophets did, so forth. You see what I'm saying? So whatever it is, right? I was I believe this more to the Bible. That's what I'm more familiar to, and that's where I think a lot of the truth is at. But another conversation. And so therefore, I can't not be nominal about it and pretend use it as a as a as, a, as use that my spirituality there as something to keep me balanced because oh well, I'm doing my transcendent duty by going to church and maybe setting up some chairs here and there and there he is I'm doing God's service now and I go home and watch and do the same thing all over again mm -hmm. nothing supernatural happened there <laughs> we're pretending it but nothing really happened there well you're using it as a foundation but you're using some pretty weak material it's yeah and you well you, <laughs> So even, okay, so it's so in, in the sound, so does it have to be something transcendent where it's supernatural? Well, not exactly, but it has to be something where it's not so natural to the point to, when you read something like literature and poetry, and you're someone like an agnostic or someone of a, of a humanist, and you read something like that, and you, give, and, you, and you look at nature, you look at humanity, just a little bit different. You look at your life with a little more meaning. You look at yourself with, you know, I'm going to create something. I want to produce something. I want to go into a journey, just like this person did. Something, right. That's something I'll say myself. I'm a little nervous. I'm going to take a risk, though. Yeah, and then see what I can create. Maybe something of that nature. Again, you you you're, in, you're entering a realm that's transcendent. It's not exactly empirical. That's not exactly practical. But it's outside yourself. That's it, a weird thing too, because I feel like not all those people, but a lot of them, they get stuck in that repetitive. They have their little daily motion set before them every single day, and they never break that mold. And I think there's, as far as I can tell. When I poke at those people and I, you know, why don't you try taking some kind of risk in doing something? They always withdraw. They're like, oh, hell no, man, I'm not doing that. Which, that's a problem. You have to take risks. Like, anything worthwhile in, right, in life has some kind of risk to it. Marriage, kids, even your job, it all has some amount of risk associated with it. Mm -hmm. Especially marriage and kids. I ask you this, then. Someone who does live a practical life like that. How would they consider living a practical life like that a risk? Say that again. How would someone who lives a practical life uh -huh. consider their practical life being a risk taker? Consider themselves a risk taker. See, they, for me, yeah. the answer, for me, the answer is discipline. They obviously see discipline as a risk, so they every day they have to stick to this routine. Now that it's borderline compulsive, but that's different. They see discipline as a yeah, risk. Yeah, because yeah, as a risk to the if they're not disciplined. If they're not, if they're not disciplined, disciplined okay. oh they're oh my god, I have to I have to A B C D E F G. Uh, I must, okay. I must, I must, I must, and that's a risk for them. So I can understand that, but then I would still say to your point, you're missing something else. Obviously, there uh, something outside of that. You're living in fear now. You need you need a different you need an outlet right. of some sort. You take need something. To, yeah, take a step out. You still need to take a different risk. Right. Because I'm sure there would be people who listen to this and say, hey, look, man, it's hard for me to get up every day and do this, 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 and this. And those are just the things that I need to do, nonetheless, the things that I want to do. Right. So you, in a way, you are it's taking a risk. I'm not saying you're not. However, the fact that you're reliant on that and afraid to step out of it, 
that's where you need to assess your next risk. Yeah. That's where you need to start working for yourself and living for yourself and finding some soul and finding some purpose and meaning and all the lovely words that we've been using these last 45 minutes. Well, I gotta get going. Yeah, so. I think that's a good stopping point. One thing before, there's something I Go always ahead. want to just close with this. Is this is the thing closer? I, this is something. Well, you're usually the finisher, but. <laughs> uh, this is something I shared with this before. This is something I never forgot when I was 18. I went to this orientation thing about us helping us uh, young youngsters find our find our way in life. And it was this. Uh, they showed us a video of this motivational speaker. I never knew. I can't remember who it was. But he talked. To, he said something about. He asked a question. And I never forgot. He asked a question about where do you find treasure? No, where do you find lost treasure? Where do you find lost treasure? At? And, uh, and I'm just, we're just kind of thinking, I don't know, maybe in the ocean, maybe go where the, where the ancients were, maybe go somewhere where we found archaeology, go touch archaeologists, they might be able to help us find some Is lost treasure, cool? something of that nature. He's like, no, go to, the, go to the cemetery, he says. And even then there was a pause, I'm like, cemetery? Of course, yeah, people probably bury their watches and got Rolexes when they, no, no, he says, <laughs> uh, he's, that was, yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking, I was thinking, yes. He's you like, were motivated by money back then, weren't you? Yes. Oh, yeah. man, you can sell that watch. Mm. It rings and stuff. Are you telling me to become a grave robber? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But he goes, no, but he, he actually says, you know, I think you know where he's going with this. He said, yeah. he said basically, lost treasure is those ideas that die with people who never got a chance to express them because they were too afraid. They never took that risk. So their ideas never got, their ideas, great ideas that could have been involved and could have, we all could have shared and been part of never even came to fruition, never even came to even be noticed because he died with the people. And I was like, oh my, that just had me thinking a lot different. It's way more than a oh. body in the burial. Mm-hmm. So there's more to life than just That's survival, painful, man. In other words, mm-hmm. it is. Good ending. I like That's that. a good ending. All right, we're stopping there. Farewell!